Have you heard of Huawei? I bet you have. They make cell phones that are sold throughout Canada, but they make more than just phones. They make deep telecommunications infrastructure, the backbone of our phone networks, our internet, which basically these days are the same thing, and they're world leaders in what's called fifth generation or 5G internet technology that will be blazingly fast. We'll think it's instantaneous. Download entire movies on your phone in less than a second. That's just what the consumer experience could be like, but imagine all the data that could be moved that fast. It could control anything, everything from cars to airplanes, from factories and dams to defense systems. It's almost here. And Huawei is a world leader in manufacturing the hardware that would run 5G. Forget about handphones. That's the fun stuff. Huawei builds the system. Except, as you can tell, Huawei is a Chinese company, as in communist China, where every strategic company is under the control of the government, the dictatorship, and where warfare is fought increasingly online. China's battle against the Hong Kong democracy activists, for example, it's not mainly fought with bullets. It's fought with facial recognition software that can identify people at a glance. It's with GPS in cell phones so the government can tell who went to a demonstration. Hong Kong protesters try to frustrate that technology by pointing lasers at police cameras or even by trying projections of fake faces on top of their real faces. I'm not sure if those work, but what if your entire internet was built on Chinese systems? Would you literally trust a political enemy, a dictatorship, to build your national infrastructure? If you made a 911 phone call that would go on Huawei, military communication, satellites, Alarm systems, the systems that control the launch of weapons, even nuclear weapons. I mean, that's just the hardware. And in a new series of laws, the first passed just this week, the next one to be passed on January 1st, China will bring in invasive measures to have backdoor access to encrypted secrets that pass through Chinese tech companies. There really is no dividing line behind between corporations and the communist government anymore. It's fashionable in the West to hate Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook for him snooping into your privacy. And there's a lot of justification for, for being wary of him, but Facebook is mainly just a place to chat with friends and share interests. Imagine giving Mark Zuckerberg access to everything you say, every email, every text, every place your GPS says you go. All right, Zuckerberg has probably most of that. But then imagine if Zuckerberg were a dictator, and I mean truly a dictator, who had the power of life or death over people, and that he built all the cell phone systems in the country so you couldn't just delete Facebook from your phone because it was the phone and the network underneath. That's Huawei. Don't take it from me, and don't think this is a right-winger being worried. Here's Susan Rice. Barack Obama's national security advisor telling Canadians to beware. It gives the Chinese the ability, if they choose to use it, uh, to access all kinds of information, civilian intelligence, military, that could be very, very compromising. So I, much as I disagree with the Trump administration on a number of things, on this, their concern about Huawei, I believe they're right. As a matter of protection, would the United States have to have a slightly different yes, security relationship with Canada? Yes, and that will throw the Five Eyes collaboration, which is, serves the security interests of every Canadian and every American, into jeopardy. It, it, we just, it, it can't be done. Can't share. I don't see how we can share in the way we have. It's not a joke. It's truly serious. All the Western democracies are worried about Huawei. Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, along with Canada, the United States. Those are the five eyes countries. Those are the essential allies who can trust each other to share the most confidential military and diplomatic secrets. Well, not if China gets to see every message sent. Now, some people say that Huawei is just a company. Well, there's no such thing in communist China, especially such a strategic company. Scrolling through Huawei's Twitter feed is a bit absurd. It's 
hundreds of people around the world accusing Huawei of spying for the Chinese government. And it's Huawei writing back to all of them saying, no, no, that's not true. We'd never do that. Never, never, ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure if a tweet is enough to convince people. You see, a few years ago, China was kind enough to build the new headquarters for something called the African Union. That's sort of an African version of the United Nations. And Huawei was kind enough to make it super high tech with all the networking. And they did this with another Chinese company. But, uh-oh, here's a story from the Financial Times about how that ended. African Union officials have accused China of hacking its headquarters computer systems every night for five years and downloading confidential data. Beijing funded the AU's $200 million building in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, while a Chinese state-owned company built it. So every night, China would just download every single thing from everyone in the building. State secrets, diplomatic secrets, military secrets, industrial secrets. That's just what they did every single night. They knew everything that every country thought was private. It's similar to what China did to Canada's leading high-tech company a few years back called Nortel. They just hacked and stole all the industrial secrets, destroying the company. But Huawei says, no, no, never. That's absurd. Trust them. I mean, here in Canada, they sponsor Hockey Night in Canada. They sure seem like Canadian patriots, uh, unlike that Don Cherry, I guess. And, and they love showering the liberals with cash. They're smart that way. Now, it's illegal for companies, even Canadian companies, to donate money directly to a political party. So instead, Huawei donates it to a liberal front group called Canada 2020 that's run by Trudeau's close friend, Thomas Pitfield. Huawei knows how Trudeau works. And Huawei knows how money works, especially in low ethics jurisdictions like Trudeau's Canada. So Huawei recently partnered to provide fast internet to dozens of small remote communities in Canada's far north. Of course they did. It's very strategic up there. The mineral wealth, surveillance of our coastline, military exercises, emergency response. Well, look, if we need broadband internet and fast cell phones in our north, let's build it. Let's spend the money to defend our sovereignty, not outsource the north to a Chinese company. But it's working. Huawei knows our pressure points. Just like Chinese spies know about how to corrupt a man, some men will take bribes, some men go for a honeypot trap, same with a country. Offer free stuff, like to the African Union. Give money to universities for research. They'll be bought by anyone. Slowly undermine a country, then you can't even get Huawei out. You know how Huawei is lying when they say they're not political, because when Canada, when Canadian police arrested a Huawei executive last year on suspicion of securities fraud, and violating sanctions. She was arrested lawfully by police at the request of police in the US. It's a, it's a matter for the courts. And it's a, a matter for Huawei, a private company, so they say. But actually, no, immediately, China, the government of China, not the company called Huawei, the government of China seized two Canadian hostages, Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig, and held them as a tit for tat for this arrest of a Huawei executive. And China's government also brought in trade sanctions against Canadian agriculture. Well, hang on. I thought Huawei just said they had nothing to do with the Chinese government. They weren't connected at all. Yeah, no, we're not that dumb. Well, China's had our hostages for over a year. And now that the Canadian election is done, Trudeau has decided to bend the knee to China. I mean, he did say it's his favorite country. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. That was about five years ago. He's kept that position ever since. In fact, Trudeau just appointed a new foreign minister, Francois-Philippe Champagne, who is actually a China propagandist in a 2017 interview with China's state-backed China Global Television Network. This is from uh, the Global Mail. Mr. Champagne praised China for its stability and adherence to rules-based order. You know, in a world of uncertainty, of unpredictability, of questioning, 
about the rules that have been established to govern our trading relationship. Canada, and I would say China, stands out as beacon of stability, predictability, a rule-based system, uh, a very inclusive society. He praised the dictatorship. Now, they hadn't taken the hostages then, but they were crushing Tibet and Xinjiang. He praised the dictatorship. Trudeau's new ambassador to China, so that's a foreign minister, Trudeau's new ambassador to China, he's an active pro-China lobbyist too. Before becoming Canada's ambassador to China in September, Dominique Barton was a staunch advocate for trade with China and headed McKinsey and Company, a consulting firm controversial for its dealings with Chinese state-owned clients. <laughs> Why don't you just appoint a Huawei executive as ambassador? It's happening. Between the legal bribes from Huawei to internet our north and to give research cash to our universities, between that and the ideological softness Trudeau shows towards China, Huawei is coming into Canada. They really are. They're colonizing us. And that's crazy. I think we have to stop this. All of us have to stop this. We have to show Trudeau and the world that we won't accept this. We won't accept the Chinese Communist Party having access to everything we say, do, think, read, all of our secrets, all our 911 calls. I don't want to be another African Union office. We should kick them out simply because of their outrageous seizure of the two Canadian hostages. We should keep them out because our democratic allies say it's essential for our own security. We have to say no. And if that means we have to pay a little bit more to help build cell phone towers in the north, let's do that. Let's keep these authoritarian bullies out of Canada. Let's kick them out. Ban them. Ban their hardware. If it's already in, rip it out. If it's not in, keep it out. I'm starting a petition. It's a nonpartisan petition. Everyone can sign it. I want to get 100,000 signatures. I want to present it not to the pro-China foreign minister, not to the pro-China ambassador. I want to give it to the new minister of public safety, Bill Blair. Unlike Mr. Champagne or Mr. Barton, Bill Blair was never a China lobbyist. He used to be a cop. Maybe he still cares about security and freedom. I don't know, but it's worth a try. And even if he ignores the petition, we need to show other Canadians that it's okay to take a stand against China and Huawei and they're bullying, and they're spying, and damn it, they're kidnapping of two Canadian citizens. Go to banhuawei.com and sign the petition, and let's send them packing, and get them off this hockey night in Canada too. That's a disgrace. Go to banhuawei.com. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.